Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Azorius Affinity. What is going on, everybody, and welcome to the Flex Day here on It Resolves. Today is the day where we get to explore other formats, anything we really want to. Uh, last week, we stuck with Standard, but this week, I thought we would jump into Historic with a deck that we actually practiced yesterday on the MTG and Chill series. If you've been enjoying that, please go leave a like. Let me know that you have been enjoying it. I really would appreciate it. But this is the deck. We played 12 games with this deck and did not drop a game. We won every single one. I believe it was 12. It might have been 11. Uh, regardless, this deck is amazing. Uh, it is a classic style affinity deck with, of course, a historic twist because we don't have all of the modern and old school kind of affinity cards that are uh, available in other formats. Uh, so the idea, if you don't know what affinity is, essentially affinity cheapens up artifacts uh, for each other artifact that you already control. So as an example, Mirror Enforcer costs seven normally for a 4-4, which is quite expensive, but uh, this costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. So, uh, because we have a lot of one mana artifacts, and in some cases zero, uh, what this ends up being is more like a 4-4 four, four for two, maybe three, maybe even free. Uh, and so it's a really powerful ability. Uh, we also have it here on the Thought Monitor, which is a really powerful card. It comes into play. You will always have to pay that blue, uh, kind of no matter what, but when it comes into play, it's a 2-2 flyer. Generally, you can get it down to one or two mana and you draw two cards as well. So the value here that's represented is really amazing, honestly. Uh, sitting at the top end, we also have Karn, Scion of Urza, mostly for that minus two ability. Uh, we can certainly use it to draw some extra cards, but that minus two is really gonna close out the games as quickly as possible. And that's kind of what we're just looking to do. To help us also close out the game, we have two uh, equipments in the deck, one of which is just Shadow Spear giving trample and lifelink uh, so separating our life totals from the opponent quite heavily by gaining us a lot of life but then also dealing a lot of damage as well uh, and then we also have Nettle Cyst, uh, which is a living weapon. So this comes into play with a 0-0 germ token immediately equipped to it. Uh, so the germ does not die uh, unless you have no other artifact. Well, no, because this counts as one. So uh, it gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. This is where we're going to get a lot of the big power between Nettle Cyst and Karn. Uh, now, another nice little kind of engine piece for the deck is Ingenious Smith. This is going to get some counters. It's also going to refill our hand and in the early turns of the game. Hopefully we can get this down pretty quick and get a lot of extra value out of it. Uh, we do have uh, Retrofitter Foundry as well as a really nice little turn one play. Uh, you can use this to sacrifice some of our other things to build up to a 4-4 construct, which is just kind of a long way of getting to the end of the game. Uh, it does work quite well with things like Ornithopter though, where you can sacrifice that Thopter token uh, and create that 4-4 colorless uh, artifact. So it actually works very well there. Uh, portable Hole as well as Metallic Rebuke, both kind of interactive pieces. Uh, obviously Portable Hole just getting some stuff off the field, the Metallic Rebuke really keeping things from hitting the battlefield. You can also utilize the uh, Improvise here to cheapen this up with some of your artifacts. It works great with things like Shadow Sphere, uh, which is kind of just a, a, a do nothing. It doesn't tap for anything, so you can utilize it in that way. Uh, another nice card here, of course, is Esper Sentinel. It is an artifact, so it synergizes with the deck, but it also will hopefully be drawing us a couple extra cards as we go. Uh, normally, I wouldn't talk too much about the lands, but it is really important to note that we have Darksteel Citadel as well as uh, the, the Razor Tide Bridge here, both of which are artifact lands, uh, which means we can, one, pull them with Ingenious Smith, but two, cheapen up some of these later game threats with those cards. So all things to be considered, all really, really important pieces to the affinity puzzle. I'm really excited to jump into this, guys. Again, if you missed the MTG and chill, that was our practice with this deck. Uh, and it went really well, <laughs> surprisingly well, uh, and I'm really excited to see if we can keep that streak going. So let's go ahead, guys. Let's jump right into game one. Let's see how we do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, and this is an okay hand. It's not really a great start, honestly. Uh, from the perspective of we really don't have any early game, like crazy good threats, we can get some artifacts down pretty quickly. I'll try it. Uh, generally speaking, I think you would 
want to send this back uh, just because you really don't know what we're up against and it looks like elves is going to be the play. Uh, now that's actually a pretty reasonable draw. That's going to allow us to uh, get a little bit further into the deck and hopefully draw something like maybe an ornithopter. Uh, I found a lot of people don't know uh, what that retrofit fitter uh, uh, does which is kind of interesting and you can actually do quite a bit with it. So I am going to take two here. We'll see what we hit. Um, I think it's probably just another retrofitter. Uh, so again, keeping in mind, if we play this, it essentially cheapens up the mirror enforcer. So while it isn't a free play, it does help us get to some of these other plays a lot quicker, which is very nice. Uh, but I am expecting we might just get run through by elves here. We did face an elf deck in the MTG and chill video, which was kind of interesting. We did not lose uh, as much as I really thought we would. Uh, we didn't, uh, which is kind of awesome. Okay. Rabid Bite gonna go ahead and take care of that. That's perfectly fine. It's a little annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, let's see, what is the best bet here? Uh, we can do this, get the Nettle Sis down. Um, alternatively, we can just do this. I'm actually gonna go this route and see what we hit first. Um, interesting. So I think it's probably Thought Monitor. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. We kind of just want to get as much down as we can and get a counter here. Uh, so next turn, what we can do is drop that bridge, hopefully gain a little bit here. Wow. Okay. Uh, so I think we're probably just dead, right? Like <laughs> they have a million things they can do. Um, but what an interesting game. Uh, they really killed it with that verdant uh, rejuvenation there. That was really, really good. Uh, unfortunately, we're just not going to block here. All right, portable hole. Uh, how helpful is portable hole right now? Only slightly, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's not super helpful. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do that. It's gonna get us there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're pretty dead. There's not a lot we can hit here that's actually gonna be all that helpful. Um, we can go ahead and do this. If we draw an Ornithopter, we can drop the Mirror Enforcer as well for free, but we did not. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and good game here. They definitely have us. Uh, that was a beautiful start for Elves. Man, Verdant Rejuvenation, such a sick card. Well done, opponent. Let's move on to game two. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game two. Let's hope we can do a little better this time. I actually like this start quite a bit. Um, let's do this and we'll go ahead and drop that Shadow Spear. Uh, so what we're able to do here is get to a turn two Smith. We've already got the Shadow Spear down. So this is also hitting for every color. Uh, and we've actually just got a really nice kind of clean start here. Uh, opponent did give us a little hello, so we'll do the same. Um, I think we'll actually just take the Citadel here. Our colors are kind of fine, uh, and so it's more of a matter of getting to the affinity portion of the deck, uh, which Darksteel Citadel certainly helps out with that. Um, looks like this is going to be a control matchup, which is certainly a formidable uh, opponent. The nice thing about this is, between Nettlesist and Shadow Spear, if they don't have a way to just deal with the equipment, they may not actually have all that much they can do, which is just nice. Um, let's go ahead and throw this down. Um, I guess the question becomes, do we want to leave up the Metallic Rebuke? Uh, and I think the answer is probably yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's make sure we're tapping properly here. All right, let's do this. Um, does this even help us? I guess no, technically it doesn't. Um, that's fine. All right, we'll go ahead and throw out the Retrofitter uh, Foundry then. Um, I was thinking we had one extra mana available, or excuse me, one extra artifact for that Metallic Rebuke, and we just didn't, so that's fine. Um, I don't think we're under too much pressure at the moment, so they're going to Mind Stone. That's fine. Uh, I think it's next turn that we're going to be a little bit uh, under the gun here, so very nice. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and attack in. Um, I'm anticipating a block, sure. Technically we could have portable hold there, but I don't actually think we need to. 
Um, we could portable hold the Mind Stone, though. Uh, and I think I actually like that quite a bit. So let's do that. Get that out of there. Um, yeah. So I think at this point, we can actually just pass leaving up the Retrofitter Foundry plus Metallic Rebuke. Seems pretty good. Uh, yep. I'm going to go ahead and counter this. Uh, from the perspective of, it just is one less thing that they're able to do. Uh, which is great. So let's go ahead and throw this out. We're going to gain another counter here because it is an extra turn. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. And there we go. We got the good game. That was beautiful. That's exactly how we drew it up. Let's see if we can do it again in game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we'll we'll try this. It's not necessarily a great starting hand, but we do have an Ornithopter with a turn two Metallic Rebuke, uh, if we so choose. Um, and we also have the uh, Razor Tide Bridge right off the bat with the uh, the um, excuse me the Thought Monitor for that affinity hit. So we'll do the best we can here. Um, again, guys, I just want to reiterate the fact I've mentioned this in the last couple videos. We've been doing those MTG and Chill videos as a bit of a practice run uh, for some of the decks, and this is really the first time that we're getting to see a practice run before the true run. Uh, I encourage you guys, go check that video out. That was me sitting down with the deck for the first time. I have played Affinity before, let me be clear, but it's been in Modern, it's not been in uh, Historic. Uh, and so this is a brand new deck for me. It was a really exciting deck to, uh, to sit down and practice for a while. We got about an hour in, uh, which was really, really nice. And again, it was either 11 or 12 games. So if you want to check that out, please feel free. It is up on the uh, MTG and Chill playlist. It's a really great series if you're just looking to like throw up some gameplay and not worry too much about commentary or anything like that. Uh, just be able to watch some gameplay, maybe learn a thing or two along the way. So it's a really nice piece. Uh, it's super easy. It's just kind of background. It's not It's not meant to be the main focus of the channel. It's just to be supportive of these videos. So uh, just to be clear on where that kind of fits in uh, with what we're trying to do. And we won. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, sure. We'll move into the next one. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are for our next game. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we can keep this. It's a little tricky uh, from the perspective of that ingenious Smith is a little awkward with the tapped land. I'd actually like to get the Citadel down first, but uh, I think this is actually going to be OK. We'll we'll see how things go. Um, we actually had a game freeze uh, at the beginning of the, the game uh, in between this, and so I had to cut that one, so I do apologize. But in the interest of honesty, I did have to cut one game. Uh, it landed on the versus screen, and then literally just the game crashed. Uh, I tried to open twice, and it just crashed every time. So I don't know if anybody has advice on why that happens. I've, um, I've actually had that happen quite a bit especially recently. Uh, and it's very frustrating in the middle of recording when your game freezes, you have to wait for it uh, to, to lag out on the time. Uh, because if you try and reopen, it'll try and jump you right back into that initial game. Uh, but the game will just continuously freeze. So it's kind of a, a weird cycle until you break that. So it's a little annoying. Uh, I'll be honest, a little frustrating. Uh, opponent debating on whether or not to keep. They have a 106 card deck. What? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, very unsure of what we might be up against, um, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, this could be interesting. This could go one of two ways, I feel like, very, very quickly. Uh, anyway, guys, yes. So how is Affinity playing out so far? I love it. I, I really, really love Affinity. Uh, it's one of my favorite deck styles in Modern, actually. Uh, and I, I just think it's so, so good. So um, we'll see how things go. I'm actually going to pass. Uh, I'd actually like to leave the Ornithopter for the Ingenious Smith this upcoming turn. So I think this is actually just a potentially better play. Uh, let's go ahead and play that Ingenious Smith. Cool. We'll grab a Nettle Cyst. Uh, let's go ahead and drop the Ornithopter. Uh, and that just allows us to get a counter here. Since we weren't representing any damage with the Ornithopter regardless, there was not really a reason to uh, to push that too much. So uh, what can we get this time? Um, okay, yeah, so we'll, we'll Ingenious Smith again. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll Ornithopter again. I don't really love it, but that's fine. Um, 
and we will attack in with the 3-3 to get some initial damage off. Um, I want to be triggering these smiths as quickly as possible because, again, we are the aggressive deck. Let's let's keep that in mind that we are definitely the deck that's trying to finish the game very quickly. Uh, and so doing it or, or doing so as quickly as possible is very important for us. Now, I anticipate a counter here um, or some kind of maybe ramp spell like a growth spiral, something along those lines. I don't even know if that's illegal in historic. Yeah. Okay, decisive denial. Sure, you got it. Uh, let's get an attack for five in, uh, and we are still. I mean, we're we're chipping away at them pretty pretty solidly here. Uh, that's not super great, so that's fine. All right, we'll drop the nettle sis now that we know we can actually get it down. Uh, that's going to represent quite a bit more damage as well, and there we go. We just got the win. That's really how a lot of these games go. <laughs> uh, that's exactly as as we drew it up again. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into another one. All right, guys. Here we are for our next game. Uh, and yeah, I I think this is a reasonable start. Uh, we can start with the Esper Sentinel, which is actually one of the best turn one plays in my opinion. Uh, just from the standpoint of you know if they try to remove it or anything like that, they can. Uh, but we at the very least are going to be able to um, draw a card off of that. So we'll see what the opponent decides to do. Um, excuse me. We also have that Metallic Rebuke, so it might be worth it to go Spire of Industry uh, and then see how things land from there. Yeah, so let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Portable Hole on that Knight. Um, and let's attack in. Now the question becomes, do we want to throw the foundry out or should we wait? I'm actually gonna wait uh, and leave up that metallic rebuke. I think that might be the better option here. As Again, as much of an, we are the aggressive deck, so it is worth noting. Uh, oh wait, oh, I'm an idiot. We can't even metallic rebuke. <laughs> Oh, that was really stupid. I keep miscounting. Um, that was 100% just my silliness. Uh, that's okay. All right, let's throw out you. Um, and let's throw out the other Spire here. So again, this time we do have either Metallic Rebuke or this open, so we'll, we'll make sure. Uh, or no, we still don't have Metallic Rebuke. We don't have blue. Ugh. Um, okay. I am messing up the Metallic Rebuke play like crazy. Uh, that's okay. Let's do this. That's very good. Let's make sure we throw this down. Um, okay, we will attack in first. Uh, and I will go ahead and Thought Monitor here. Why? Why did it tap these? That was so stupid. All right, whatever. Um, <laughs> cool. That's really annoying that it tapped the Spire and not the uh, Pathway. That auto tapper is a problem. Uh, I do anticipate them having quite a number of sweepers and stuff like that in this deck, but so far they seem to be kind of lacking in that regard, so that's helpful. Um, I will go ahead and create a Thopter here. Uh, this is one of the ways, again, you can kind of chain up uh, to like a 4-4 or something along those lines and get a little extra damage in, um, but we'll see what the opponent might be up to here. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do this. So again, just allowing ourselves that ability to chain these and get to a little bit of extra damage on this upcoming turn. This might also force a removal spell from the opponent, though it looks like it will not. Okay. All right, let's not mess up place. <laughs> That's important. Um, let's drop the Nettle Cyst. Uh, yeah, let's make sure we have that down. Kind of curious to see if they do anything. Looks like no. Okay. Let's drop that. I'm going to go ahead and drop one of these as well. Uh, keeping in mind, guys, we do now have the Metallic Rebuke available. <laughs> Finally. Um, all right. I will save that Ornithopter because, again, keeping in mind if they do sweep, we want something to equip that Nettle Cyst. Uh, up to and so ornithopter is basically a free way of doing that um sure i'll i'll counter this i don't know that we need to but they are stuck on lands uh and so let's punish everything that we can for the most part 
And if they have a sweeper, they have a sweeper, but I think that's um, a more effective play, potentially. Nice. Love that guy. Um, all right, let's do this. Uh, they do not have any uh, blockers for this, so we should be perfectly fine. Go ahead and drop that down, and that should give us more than enough to get the win. And there we go. Phyrexian Obliterator, such a great card. Uh, we do have time for one more, guys. Let's go ahead and do that now. Maybe we can get to Plat 2. All right, guys, here we are for our last game. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, I do actually like this start quite a bit. We've got the Esper Sentinel, which is, again, probably one of the best turn one plays. And then, of course, that Shadow Spear coming down afterwards with the Ornithopter and then uh, ideally cheapening up for that Thought Monitor. So this is a pretty nice one. Uh, we also do have Iganjo. I actually normally, you know, if you're in a position of you uh, need lands, you can throw that Iganjo out. And the scenario of this deck, I, I like to hold on to it a little bit more often, only from the perspective of uh, we kind of have a lot of opportunity to not need as many lands. Uh, and so it might be worth it just to hold on to it. But we'll, of course, see uh, when once turn two, turn three rolls around uh, what we end up doing. Uh, looks like our opponent is taking a little while to decide uh, what they want to do. Uh, again, in the interest of honesty, the game froze again. <laughs> so I had to wait. This recording is a lot longer than it's actually going to be solely because I've had to wait each time to, to reset everything. So that's fun. Um, anyway, let's see what the opponent is looking to do. Guys, I will take the opportunity, I guess, while we're waiting. Um, just to say a huge thank you uh, to everybody who's been supporting the channel recently. It's been great to see the turnout on each of the videos going up and up and up. Uh, it's pretty awesome, actually. Uh, and so I really do appreciate you guys being so supportive of the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, and more honestly than you probably know, I know John feels the exact same way. And I know uh, he's been working hard on the live stream end of things to keep us going there. So between the two of us, we've been able to get quite a lot of content out, which has just been phenomenal. Uh, and again, it's an absolute pleasure to have everybody in here hanging out with us and hopefully having a good time. So... Uh, I'm actually going to go for the double sentinel play. Um, and yeah, we'll throw the deserted beach out, I suppose. Um, we don't really need to play the shadow spear quite yet. We can wait until this turn. <laughs> All right. Let's do that. Um, now I think we will go ahead and play the shadow spear and just equip it up. There's really not a huge harm in trying this um, from the perspective of, at the very least, we get to gain a little bit of life. Uh, and now we actually have a Thought Monitor next turn, regardless of what happens. Unless, of course, I guess they kill something. But it uh, looks like they are. That's fine. We get to draw two cards off of this, which is pretty awesome. And again, that's the beauty of these Esper Sentinels, is the earlier you get them down, the more damage they do to the opponent. Um, so we could go Thought Monitor... Uh, and that's it. Alternatively, I, I actually like going for the Ingenious Smith. Um, I'll take this. Uh, we're not excessively far away from being able to play that, so I feel like it's probably worth it. Uh, we'll get a counter there. I'm going to take the action here. Um, yeah, and we'll just swing in for one. Keeping in mind, we can use this to sacrifice the Ornithopter, uh, if we so choose, just to be able to get that 4-4. Um, but, yeah, this is exactly why we wanted to do this. Let's make sure we get that going. Technically, we should have maybe tapped the Ornithopter, but that's okay. <laughs> Alright. Um, I'm going to go Thought Monitor first. I would like to draw an extra card or two. Sure. Get you down. Get you down. And we'll get you down. We're just going to go all out here. Um, Should have probably in up. Well, no, it wouldn't have mattered. All right. Now, uh, really, the hope is that they just don't have another Phyrexian Obliterator, but it looks like they do. That's fine. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do this. Uh, we're just kind of going for max damage at this point, so. 
<laughs> Nettle cyst is so good. Um, okay, well, we win, I think. Uh, let's, let's just go ahead and move this over here. Yeah. Uh, again, Nettle cyst just doing the most, and there we go. We got the win. That was a really solid run, guys. I think we only lost one game. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys, again, I just want to say uh, in the interest of honesty, like I said, there were two games that actually froze up uh, and the client crashed. And so I, I do apologize. Technically speaking, all of those games were or those two games, I guess you did miss, but nothing. Literally, it just landed on the versus screen and then froze. So <laughs> any suggestions would be greatly appreciated to avoid that in the future. Uh, I do hate we lost that that game one against elves. I think that's probably one of the worst matchups for the affinity deck. Uh, so Solely because I think they're just faster. They just have a lot more powerful plays as well. And so in that instance, I don't think that's unreasonable, but we did beat it in the practice matches. So I was really hoping we could get it here too. But you know, honestly, that's okay. We got a lot of games in this time around and to, for some very good results. And so if you're looking for a historic deck to, to take on the uh, best of one ranked ladder, I think this is a really good suggestion. I do think Elves is probably a little faster, like I mentioned, but the uh, resilience of this deck and just being able to kind of metallic rebuke things you don't need or you don't want on the field and other stuff like that. Like there's a little more interaction. I think it's a very, very solid deck for that reason. So all in all, highly suggest it. Had a lot of fun with this deck. And again, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel. Really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys again tomorrow for another standard gameplay video.